Hello, this is Amanda Malavi with Business 312 Principles of Marketing. Today we're going to go over Chapter 7, which is really about creating value for target customers. Let's take a look at the overall marketing process and where we are. So again, we've gone through many, many steps, um, six chapters. And the, in the last chapters, we actually started looking at consumer and business behaviors and how to get into those um, target markets black boxes so that we stimulate the need for our products and services to create value. So today we're going to use that data and assume that we've understood what kind of marketing we're going to do. But now we're going to figure out specifically how to become more tactical and how to really segment and target a market and what strategies to use. And at the end of the day, the reason we do all of this is to create value. And the reason we create value is so that our customers love us and so we can create profits and customer equity. Our learning objectives are four today. One is designing a customer-driven strategy through market segmentation, targeting, differentiating your product and services, and positioning yourself in a way that it's competitive. We're gonna list and discuss the major bases for segmenting consumer and business markets. We're gonna explain how companies identify attractive markets and choose a strategy for that market. And we'll discuss how companies differentiate and position their products for maximum competitive advantage. So let's start with objective one, which is defining what market segmentation is, target segmentation, differentiation, and positioning. So here is an overall um, viewpoint of this whole entire chapter. Segmentation is how to select customers to serve or how to select people you want to target. It can include segmentation, which is you take an overall market and you divide it into smaller segments. And then based off of those segments, you're going to target a specific segment based off of how attractive they are to you and your services. The way that you target them and create value is by creating a value proposition. A value proposition is really what are you doing? What is your image? What is the way that you position yourself? Is that going to attract that target market? And the way you do that is through differentiating yourself, your product, your services, and creating superior customer value. And the way that you position yourself, the four Ps. At the end of the day, all of this should create value for targeted customers. And today, instead of having a company as an example, we're going to use Brand You, which is all about you. At the end of the semester, you'll have a Brand You case, which you're really going to use everything we learned in marketing, and a lot of it is in this chapter, and create a positioning um, process of yourself for recruiters after you graduate. So let's take a look. So Brand You um, is really based off of targeting yourself and the best tool for targeting yourself is through LinkedIn. If you don't have a LinkedIn profile, don't worry, we'll be having you create one. But if you do have one, ask yourself, what is your LinkedIn profile targeting? So we did this in many, many um, classes over the last couple of semesters. And here's a really great example, um, Chris Nguyen. Chris Nguyen is super talented. Um, he's a Hawaii student. He's about to graduate. And uh, he wanted to target um, specific companies. So in the Brand You process, uh, we actually updated his LinkedIn profile and a little bit of his resume. And we started targeting specifically the companies that he was interested in. And if you look at this particular LinkedIn profile, it looks a lot different than most. And we'll talk about it in detail. But at the end of the day, what we're going to walk through today as the example is target market segmentation for your career, for your brand you, and we're going to get recruiters interested in you via LinkedIn searches. So let's take a look at objective number two, which is really identifying the basis for segmenting to consumers and business markets. So what is market segmentation? Again, Market segmentation is dividing a market into smaller segments with distinct needs, characteristics, or behaviors that would separate the marketing strategy or mixes. So for example, um, you wouldn't necessarily go and target uh, a pharmaceutical if 
you don't want to work there or you wouldn't target a hospital or a restaurant if you don't want to work there. So there's a huge market of jobs out there. So now we're going to actually make it a little bit smaller and target it based off of what you want, the characteristics that those companies have and the behaviors that they have and align them to your needs. And then we're going to target them through marketing strategies based off of that particular company. So once you've decided that you're going to target a specific group, you're going to get even more granular. You're going to identify um, if that target market is attractive for you. Um, so you're going to actually evaluate that attractiveness and decide how many segments you're going to target. So there's several different ways to do that, and we'll go through it the next slides. So I think this is a really great slide um, that kind of shows the entire process all in one. So think of yourself as in, you know, the um, career as an orange. And that orange has lots and lots of potential and lots of meaningful groups or customers or companies that you want to target. So we're going to segment that off and take little pieces off. And in regards to um, Chris um, and the LinkedIn profile, he decided he wanted to have a career in IT and business. Now that's huge still. And so he actually wanted to target more of the innovative companies like Google, Amazon, and IBM. So he had to really start looking at these big companies and decide if he was going to target them. And he, therefore, he took this bigger market, chose on a few segments, Google, Amazon, and IBM, and then he really identified which one was most attractive to him because he wanted to live in California or Hawaii. And so he ended up um, deciding on Google. So he's going to have to position himself and build and improve a brand so that Google chooses him. So that's through the four P's. So he's going to do that through LinkedIn. So market segmentation, again, you know, deciding that that bigger market and deciding who you're going to target really goes into four categories. Um, there's a consumer market, a business market, an international market, and then the requirements for effective segmentation. For the brand you case, um, we're actually the consumers, right? Um, but the recruiters are looking at you as a consumer as well. And they're you looking at you through LinkedIn. So that's what we're going to focus on the most. So let's take a look at segmentation for consumer markets. There's really four ways. So there's um, geographic segmentation, which you're going to look at a potential company that you want to target, or a company is looking at a potential geographic location, such as a region, a state, a, um, a country even, or even a neighborhood. And all of this is called localization. There's demographic segmentation, which is based off of people's ages and lifestyle cycle, gender, income, occupation. There's psychographic uh, um, segmentation, which divides in social classes, lifestyle, and personality characteristics. And behavioral segmentation, which divides a market into segments based off of, of knowledge, attitudes, use of a product, or response to a product. So in the brand you case, um, more than likely, you're going to use geographic segmentation and behavioral segmentation. And the reason being is because you're going to decide where you're going to work after you graduate. So in Chris's case, he wanted to work in California or Hawaii, and that's called geographic segmentation. And sorry, um, spelled geographic here incorrectly. I'll fix that before I upload it onto the drive. And he used behavioral segmentation. And from a behavioral segmentation, he tried to align what he was looking for and what knowledge he wanted to gain and experiences he wanted to gain with companies that had that product knowledge. And in particular, Chris wanted um, artificial intelligence and IT experience. But let's take a look at demographic segmentation because a lot of times recruiters or companies or even um, companies that have a specific product like Nike or, or a hotel, they'll really target demographics age and life cycle, um, gender, and income. And a lot of the reason that they do that is because those specific segments 
have a lot of similar characteristics and it's easier to target in those specific categories than it is in the larger space. From a behavioral segment perspective, um, a couple of ways to do that if you actually have a end product such as a t-shirt or um, a TV program or a hotel, for example, you're going to also target on behaviors. But there's certain behaviors that also happen during specific occasions like Mother's Day or Christmas or specific benefits that people seek a status that someone has um, or looking for, such as LVMH is going to look for that particular behavior of that status-seeking person. Or cell phone companies might look for people who use a lot of data. And then Starbucks, for example, looks at behaviors for people who really love to have loyalty um, points, such as Amazon and Prime as well. Some best practices in market segmentation are that you want to try to market in several different segments, not just one. Um, and the better that you define your target market, the better you're going to succeed. There's a experience mosaic system which classifies US households into 71 lifestyle segments and 19 levels of influence. A lot of marketing firms and, uh, and companies use experience mosaic model to identify um, like luxury families, or families that you know are are working class, or um, status lifestyles, or customers who love ruggedness. So that mosaic system is really really helpful from a marketing segmentation for the overall um, market segmentation and marketing um, divisions of many many organizations. So let's take a look at business markets. Um, they're a little bit different, but they have mostly the same variables to segmenting. Um, they have overall large markets, but some additional variables that they include are operating um, characteristics, purchasing approaches. So for example, if I'm trying to sell um, to IBM and I'm a paper producer and I know that they print a lot, then I'm gonna look to see how are they purchasing and how do they operate? And when do they purchase? Is there a certain situation? Is it at the beginning of the year, at the middle of the year, during a budget process? And then I'm gonna look at personal characteristics of that company and see if they match my characteristics and what I can offer and if it could be of value to them. International markets is really, really growing as well. Um, again, uh, the four major characteristics of segmenting a large country, for example, would be into geographic locations. So for example, for the United States, a lot of times companies will target a specific state. There's also economic factors that you might target. There's specific states or locations that potentially have more income than others. Political and legal factors. Obviously, every state has different politics and the way that we can sell to them. And so that matters. And then cultural factors as well. Same thing goes for international markets. China has different states. India has different states. And they can be broken out into these four factors as well. Last but not least, um, you want to make sure that you really are effective in your market segmentation. So let's take a look at Chris again. From an effective perspective, the first thing he wants to make sure is that it's measurable, that um, the way that he actually segments um, himself or targets a specific company, that there's a lot of companies that his um, skill sets will fit. So he can actually measure or look at LinkedIn and see how many companies um, have similar roles that he likes and if their culture and objectives match his. So that's a way of measuring how valuable his skill sets are to a specific target segment. So again, his targeting segment would be IT or those higher end um, innovative companies such as Amazon, Google, IBM, and Apple. He wants to make sure that he can target them and that he's accessible to them and they're accessible to him as well. Um, so LinkedIn is an application such as Indeed is, but LinkedIn is more of a social network, and we also know that LinkedIn is the number one recruiting app out there. So that makes it accessible to everyone in the world. 
So that's why we use LinkedIn. We make sure that it's sustainable. Make sure that your the um, companies that Chris is going to target are companies that are profitable and that in the long term he can stay there for a while. So that's why he looked at these bigger organizations. Specifically, he's interested in artificial intelligence. So Google and IBM are two great companies that um, he knows are sustainable and that if he targeted them and then was lucky enough to get an interview um, and even a job, that he could be there long term. He wants to make sure that he differentiates himself um, on LinkedIn because once you've targeted a Google or an IBM, there's 2 million people a year that apply there. So he wants to make sure that he's distinguishable and that he's different. And how he's going to do that is by the way that he market and positions himself. So he's going to go after the technical project manager roles. So he has to be different um, from everyone else that's applying for those roles as well. And last but not least, it has to be actionable. He has to be able to attract Google and IBM, so he had to take specific actions previously to be designed um, so that they will be interested in him. So, for example, internships for a college student is super critical. That's an actionable step that you proactively take in order to attract companies um, using your LinkedIn profile. So um, let's take a look at objective number three, which is all right. So Chris wants to attract Google. So how is he going to do that? And what strategy is going to use? So again, um, targeting a market is actually figuring out a set of buyers. And in this case, a buyer is actually a company that's going to purchase your time, your skills to produce value for their end consumers. So that is targeting a market. Um, they, the recruiters are either targeting you or you're targeting a company. And then you evaluate um, and segment a little bit more into detail based off of how attractive that company is for you or based off how, how attractive those recruiters see you. So that's how you'll decide which target um, companies you'll go after once you've graduated. Or perhaps when you're trying to figure out about an internship. So there's three main ways to evaluate a market. One is by segment size, how big that company is, or their growth. Um, another one is how structural, um, uh, Lee, attractive they are to you. And also their company's objectives and resources. And likewise, a recruiter is going to look at your growth plan, um, what you studied, what internships you had, how attractive you are as far as they're needing your skill sets to bring value to their end consumers, and then their objectives and their cultures and literally how much resources they have, how much money they have to be able to offer you a job. So in Chris's case, Chris looked for a high growth company in California and Hawaii, specifically tech companies, and that's the segment size and growth. From an attractiveness perspective, he really wanted a diverse organization and he wanted to make sure that they were tied to his skill set so that um, he could attract them as well. And last but not least, he interviewed at Amazon, Apple, IBM and Google, and some of them worked and some of them didn't work so well. And it was a mutual fit that he was looking for, which aligns his skill sets, his values to that company. So those are the three ways to evaluate markets or evaluate a company as well as them evaluating you on if it's a mutual match for a new job after you graduate. So based off of that, Chris really wanted to really focus on Google. And so we use LinkedIn keywords to attract that target market. And how do you do that? Well, it's pretty easy using LinkedIn. The first thing you do is you go and you look for that job that you want and the location that you want. And that pulls up all the jobs in that location. You can be very specific where we put Google Technical Project Manager, or you could even have put Technical Project Manager California or Hawaii if you wanted to actually look at a bigger market. And from there, we actually, um, Chris and I actually did a deep dive into several job descriptions and looked at the similar keywords. 
Because again, key words are how recruiters are looking at you and therefore your resume and your LinkedIn profile need to have those keywords. So that's where it's super critical to utilize um, LinkedIn and indeed even um, to look for those job descriptions. So once we figured that out, Chris had to decide, all right, well, how am I going to target them? What strategy am I going to use? There's four main strategies, undifferentiated, differentiated, concentrated, and micro-marketing. One targets companies uh, and products and consumers at a broad base, and then it goes uh, down um, step by step where it starts targeting it very narrowly. So from that perspective, let's take a deep dive into each one. And again, if there's a target on any of these slides, <clears throat> make sure that you really understand these definitions and concepts because they'll be on the quizzes and exams. <clears throat> so undifferentiated marketing is targeting the whole market with one offer. Um, if Chris just went out and put his resume out there without doing the job description analysis or really trying to understand what job he wanted, um, he would be doing what's called undifferentiated marketing. He's just offering his skill sets to the entire market on LinkedIn. That's also called mass marketing aimed at a whole market. And it's focused on common needs rather than what's different about you or your product. Then there's um, differentiated marketing, which targets several different market segments and design separate offers for each. So a goal of that is to achieve higher sales and stronger position, but it's a lot more expensive. So let me give you an example. So Procter & Gamble has many, many different products, and they actually have many, many different types of detergent. And based off of the different types of customers that they have, some that like color, some that like bleach, some that like baby products, some that like no um, no perfume in it, some that like a lot of smell in it. All of those different markets have to be targeted differently. Um, additionally, different markets in different locations, geographic locations, and different price points are gonna be targeted differently. So it's very, very expensive to target to all those markets, but it, if you do it well, there's a lot of profit to be made. And there's concentrated marketing, which is you're trying to get a large share of a smaller market. So this is where you have to be innovative and you have to be almost a niche. Um, so, for example, here's a sock company that is really trying to target the sock industry. And that sock industry is huge, but they're going after the kids who want to have funky socks. So um, from that standpoint, the people that usually use the concentrated marketing usually have limited company resources, but they know the market really, really well. And they tend to be more effective and efficient using this concentrated marketing. In this case, this is what Chris is using. He's using concentrated marketing, targeting a large organization, but a smaller market within Google, which is that technical project manager role. There's also micro-marketing, which is a practice of tailoring your products and marketing programs to suit a, um, a specific individual and location. Someone that might use micro-marketing might be Pepsi, where they um, want to target um, specifically India, and India has different tastes and needs and different regulations. Um, and different water um, specifications and coloring specifications. So they're going to target the India market very differently than they would the U.S. market. So that is called micro-marketing. It's very localized, and it's a local marketing um, plan. And at times, it can get to even an individual marketing plan. So, for example, Harry Winston. Harry Winston, who can afford a $10 million necklace? Well, they're going to target a very, very specific individual um, in order to send them pictures or present them offers for a specific necklace. Again, that all is called micro-marketing. 
There's also local marketing, which is tailoring brands to the needs and wants of a local customer segment. That's like cities and neighborhoods and stores. And then last but not least, there's individual marketing, which involves tailoring your product and marketing to a specific individual customer, also known as one-on-one -on -one marketing or mass customization. Let me give you an example of this. So Chris actually got um, an interview through Google. And once you get an interview at Google and you're ready to go out there, there's a lot of prep work that has to be done. But you also have to really market yourself individually to those four people that are gonna interview you. And how did you differentiate yourself? Well, Chris and I spent some time together thinking about that. And we actually um, created a presentation that he took along with his resume. And we even went as far as creating this Google um, type of graphic online and took a picture of Chris in a Hawaiian shirt um, with the shaka as the E, really highlighting and thinking about, well, what's Chris's um, key characteristics? Well, we wanted to highlight that he's from Hawaii, obviously, but we also wanted to highlight a, a case study and the fact that he had done internships at NASA and IBM. And one of the key words that we always find in the project management role, specifically the technical project management role, is improving viable product output. Um, that's a scrum um, type of verbiage. So we actually put that in the presentation so that it meets that customer need. Again, this is very, very individualized customer marketing that he did for Google. Again, he started off trying to target Google through LinkedIn, and that's a, a little bit more um, of a larger market. And then once he got the interview, he went and started uh, positioning himself and creating product to target Google specifically in that technical project management role. So selecting um, market segments um, really depend on a few things. One of them being your resources. Um, students don't have a lot of resources, but LinkedIn is, is free and creating a resume and a profile just takes a lot of effort. So it's good to um, utilize those. And then the presentation that Chris created was free. We used it PowerPoint. You got to make sure that you have some variability in your skill set in order to really target a market segment and understand what that segment wants and how it meets your differentiated skill sets. You got to understand their product life cycle, um, where they are in that market, how variable they are. And you also got to understand your competitors' marketing strategies. So Chris had to differentiate himself from all those 2 million people that wanted to compete. And how he did that, again, was through his internships, where he focused on creating an internship um, program for himself at NASA that were skill sets that Google was interested in, which is database creation, project management, coding, and also artificial intelligence. So number four um, objective is, well, how do you differentiate yourself once you've decided um, that you are going to go after a specific market and how to differentiate yourself in a way that you maximize your competitive advantage? So let's take a look at um, another brand you case um, from last summer. Here is Jessica and I blacked out her face and I blacked out her name so that she has um, not a lot of people going to her and asking her, you know, what happened and what did she do in her case. So um, she started off with a pretty um, generic um, looking LinkedIn profile. Um, for the brand you case, you're going to have to put a lot more effort into it and a lot more um, key, key words in there because you're going to have to tell me what company you're going after. So um, she's looking for a finance role, and we're going to take a look at how she evolved in her brand new um, case at the end of the semester last year. So um, you need to differentiate yourself. You need to position yourself in a way that a consumer or even a recruiter finds what you have and your skill sets important to them. 
So differentiating and positioning um, is done through something called positioning maps. This is where you're going to look at yourself as a brand and you're going to compare yourself to all of the other people that might be looking um, to go to a specific company or to um, start a business and they're going to target a specific customer group. So you're going to be creating positioning maps as well where you're going to be putting yourself against your competitors. And the way that you look at your competitors is to look at who's out there on LinkedIn as well. So in the brand you case, you'll be creating a positioning map. This is Jessica's positioning map. I'm not going to tell you what accesses she had. Um, in this particular case up here, it was a large um, SUV company, and they are trying to identify uh, the types of price they have versus the benefits that they bring in their cars. And Jessica, you know, is looking for a finance degree. So she had specific criteria that she was comparing herself to against her competitors. And here in the blue is where she's at versus her competitors. So she felt pretty good about how she was going to position herself in those specific attributes. Again, they could be a specific skill set that you have, a specific talent you have, or an internship that you have, or a specific um, company um, experience that you have that would attract that particular market compared to all your competitors. So a competitive advantage is where you have advantage over your competitors gained by offering something of great value. It's either through lower prices or providing more benefits to justify your higher prices. When you're looking at a career, from a career standpoint, the lower prices is the salary that you're going to be um, looking for. And then the benefits are the benefits that you can bring and does that meet that company's desire for your your specific skill set and are they willing to pay that salary that you have that are you, you're asking for so there's several ways to um choose how to identify and position yourself one is by identifying a set of possible competitive advantages that you have versus another person or a company then choosing all of your right, um, the right competitive advantages. So again, those are the key words that you're going to be utilizing. Um, you need to make sure that if you're looking for a, a position and they have specific requirements, that you have that skill set somehow and that you've either earned it through your education, through a class, through experience, through doing nonprofit work or whatever it might be. And that's how you might have a lot of skill sets and then you're going to focus on the right competitive advantages that will attract that company. Then you're going to select your positioning strategy and then you're going to select the way that you're going to communicate so that you attract that market. So let's take a look at Jessica. Jessica wants a finance degree and so she created this positioning statement and I'm not going to show you her positioning statement because I, I want you to create your individualized positioning statement. But her tagline was that there are no limits to go to um, to how far she'll go. And she got this lotus flower. And this is how she's going to be positioning herself as this kind of a free spirit that is trying to attract finance um, roles in the beauty industry. So this really, really fits Jessica's overall brand and her strategy. And when I saw her positioning statement, this really, really went well with what she wants to do in that cosmetic spa industry. Another way to position yourself um, is through differentiating yourself through a couple of different ways. One is by the product or skill you provide or the services you provide. The, another one is through the channels, for example, you know, you um, are a marketing major, and so that's a specific channel that you're going to target um, a specific marketing firm. One is through the people that you know. Um, people can really help you get interviews or internships. Um, and then the other one is the image that you create. So, for example, if we're looking at a consumer good, Jimmy John's. Jimmy John's is doing all of it in one picture. 
It's talking about how freaky fast the product is and how freaky good it is. And oh my gosh, I am so hungry right now. And this sandwich just looks really appetizing. Again, there's a target here. So you really need to understand how to position and differentiate yourself in any given market. But just remember that there's a lot of sandwich shops. And so when you're competing with different competitors, whether it's for a job or Jimmy John's competing with another sandwich shop, the image that you use on your link, uh, on your ad or your LinkedIn pro profile is going to be the differentiator. So that's why it's super, super critical. And in that case, I wanted to show you that one of the things that Chris did that's very, very different. And when Google or Amazon or IBM looked at him, they didn't only see the fact that he had the keywords and that attracted them to him, but that he also had an interest in space and innovation. And he had a really great profile picture that made him look very professional. So this was just taken with a regular camera. He just has a jacket on with a white shirt. It doesn't have to be expensive. But your LinkedIn profile and with a brand you case, it should showcase what your interests are. And if you want an example as well, you can always look at my LinkedIn profile um, under Amanda.Malave, and it's also available on your welcome letter. So let's take a look at how competitive advantage differentiates you. It's really, really important. It's must be distinctive and superior to everyone else. You must be able to communicate how you differentiate yourself. Somehow it also has to match that skill set um, and that price point, whether it's a slice of pizza, you're not gonna say that the pizza is $100 um, for a college student, you're gonna price it at $5, for example. But if it's caviar and it's to somebody uh, that, you know, purchases caviar on a day-to-day -day basis, potentially the Kardashians, uh, they're going to want the caviar to be about $1,000 an ounce. So again, it's got to be affordable based off of your value that you bring in. And at the end of the day, whatever job you take or whatever product you're selling, it should be profitable. You should be able to market yourself in such a way that you're not breaking the bank and that you're bringing profit to yourself. So the value proposition is basically your positioning statement or how you position yourself against your pricing versus your benefits. So here is the price. Um, this could also be your salary. If you want to actually gain, get more salary, um, you would be here. If against your competitors, you're actually trying to attract the same salary you would position yourself here. Or if you have a position that you're going to go after, but because you want that experience and you haven't had it before, maybe you're gonna accept a lower salary. So that's either a price point or your salary point. And the benefits are your skill sets. So the more skills that you have that match that particular job, the more salary you can command. Or the more benefits that you have, you know, with your the pizza that you want to sell to a college student, the more that you can actually um, sell that pizza at. So the less benefits you have or the less experience you might have, potentially the less salary that you may um, want to um, accept. But the best place or the winning value proposition is really here. You want to align your skill sets to the job you want, and you want to align it in such a way that you're going to potentially attract and gain the most salary you can possibly get. So then, based off of all of this, you're going to create a positioning statement. So this is Chris's positioning statement. You want to make sure that your positioning has a two, um, you're, you're targeting to a specific tag, segment group, a specific brand, and that it is a specific concept, something that of value that is different from everybody else. So let's take a look at Chris. So Chris's statement is that he's a proven scrum master with a technical and project management reputation 
in leading large-scale projects for NASA, IBM, and startups via Sprint Agile process with the Aloha spirit. That's a mouthful, I know, but those are key words. In the IT world, he is a scrum master, and that's a skill set that he gained at one of his internships at IBM. And he got a lot of project management experience, so he wanted to highlight that. So again, he's targeting groups or companies or recruiters that are going to look for search words such as scrum master, technical and project management. They're also going to look for keywords such as large scale projects. Um, they're going to look for words such as sprint and agile. And they might not be looking for the Aloha spirit, but he wanted to actually make that as a point of difference from himself, from everybody else. And believe it or not, lots of people really love Hawaii and that Aloha spirit and they understand what it means on the mainland. So don't be afraid to market yourself with that. So again, your positioning statement that you'll create for your brand you case needs to target a specific segment based off of keyword searches. It needs to have some sort of a concept and it needs to different yourself, differentiate yourself from everybody else. Here's another example of um, Evernote. Um, Evernote is uh, obviously a um, app that's on the internet for multitaskers. And they have their positioning statement to busy multitaskers who need help remembering things. Evernote is a digital content management application that makes it easy to capture and remember moments and ideas from your everyday life. So again, you have two examples. One is Chris's and one is Evernote's as how you could create a very, very strong positioning statement for your brand new case. So once you've identified that you understand what your differentiator skill sets are, um, that you understand who you're going to target, you need to communicate that. And obviously we're gonna communicate that through LinkedIn. Um, there's three ways to do that. One is to choose a position that you want to um, use. One is to establish yourself there. And how you establish yourself when you're looking for a career is establishing yourself through an education, um, maybe a certificate, maybe a specific skill or nonprofit that you worked for, or an internship. And then the last part is maintaining that consistent performance and communication. So a lot of companies are gonna look at what internships you had, um, not just from the beginning of your career, but maybe throughout your college career. Or if you don't have a lot of internships, they also look at what nonprofits you might have worked for, or potentially um, what specific uh, project you worked on at school. So you can use all of those different things to establish yourself and then show that you've maintained performance in that manner, um, in, in that skill set. So that's the end of chapter seven. And today, what we've learned is how to target and segment markets. We use the brand case and two examples of two students um, and how they used targeting and segmenting to attract the job that they wanted to attract and what strategies they used and how they differentiated themselves via keywords, um, internships and experiences and positioning statements so that they could attract those companies using LinkedIn. And then how they communicated those, um, those uh, specific differentiators via positioning statements or in Jessica's case, she used a image and um, Chris used the image of um, outer space because he wanted to get into companies that were really innovative and using artificial intelligence. So we went through the brand you case and a little bit about what that consists of and how you can use some of these examples for your end case that will be due at the end of the semester. And then last but not least, next steps are you wanna complete all of chapter seven's homework. There's gonna also be an exam review. There's an exam next week. 
And you want to make sure that you review that in detail and complete your study plan. And don't forget that there'll be an exam next Monday. All right. Thank you. And I hope that you enjoyed um, this presentation. And I will see you in the exam review. Mahalo.